All right, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at a titration curve for a polyprotic acid, uh, polyprotic weak acid, and we're going to be titrating it with a strong base. For this particular uh, polyprotic acid, we can tell that it is a diprotic acid because we got two equivalence points. Uh, again, we can recognize an equivalence point by the steep parts of the graph where there's a large change in pH over a short amount of time. Uh, and so we get an equivalence, our first equivalence point at about 25 milliliters. We're going to get our second equivalence point at about 50 milliliters. And so this is always going to be true anytime we are dealing with a polyprotic substance that whatever volume it takes to reach the first equivalence point, uh, the second equivalence point is going to happen at double the first, uh, at double the first volume. Uh, and so again, we don't know what our polyprotic substance is, what our diprotic acid is, so we can just generically label it as H2A. So again, there are two hydrogens on this on this acid, and so for each equivalence point, what we're doing is the hydroxide is uh, is dissociating one of the hydrogens. Uh, to reach each of the equivalence points. And so again, anytime we're dealing with these acid-base equations, we're always, always just going to be dissociating one hydrogen at a time. So if we look at what the reaction might be for um, from the start of the experiment to the first equivalence point, so we can write a reaction between our diprotic acid with our strong base. Because it is a strong base, if we're doing a net ionic equation, the sodium ions aren't going to affect anything. Anytime we deal with a strong base, uh, always just worry about the hydroxide ions. And so what we can do is we can have the diprotic acid dissociate hydrogen, have the hydroxide accept the hydrogen, and so what we'll make is we'll make water and we'll make HA minus. Now again, we're only getting rid of one hydrogen ion at a time. Uh, so again, this is the reaction that's happening up to the first equivalence point. And you'll notice I drew an arrow pointing to one direction only. Technically, yes, it's in equilibrium, uh, but the K value is going to be very, very large. Anytime you have a, a, an acid reacting with a base, we're going to have a really strong, or we're going to have a really high K value. And so again, I can write it as a one-way arrow. Uh, technically, yes, it should be a, a two-way arrow. All right, so again, if we think about what's happening at the graph, so when we've added zero of our base, we, in essence, have just H2A. Now, again, this is a weak acid, so that's not entirely true. Some will dissociate on its own in water. If we just disregard that fact, um, uh, again, assume we have basically just H2A to begin with. When we reach the first equivalence point, if we look at our balanced equation, all of the H2A will have gotten converted. It will have dissociated one of its hydrogen. And so, at 25 milliliters, H2A will not exist anymore. So all of it has been converted into HA minus. So again, if we think at zero milliliters, we have just H2A. If we think at 25 milliliters, no longer H2A exists, we have just HA minus. So we have all HA minus. Now again, some will dissociate. So again, again not entirely true. So again, at our halfway point, so halfway in between, halfway to our equivalence point. So since it took 25 milliliters to reach the equivalence point, we're talking at 12.5. Uh, so again, it, it is a red dot here. So this is halfway to our equivalence. And so again, at this point, half of our H2A has been converted. Uh, half of our HA minus has been produced. And so right at the halfway point, these concentrations are equal to each other. So we're halfway through converting them all. And so again, this is a special spot on the graph where we can, at this halfway point, we can get our Ka1 value uh, from this spot on the halfway point. Now, the equivalence point, that first equivalence point, we're going to be using to either get a molar mass or a molarity. Those are typically what we're going to be using the equivalence points to solve for. Uh, and we'll, we'll do that here in a moment. Uh, so if we look at what's happening reaction-wise between the first equivalence point and the second equivalence point, uh, we now have just HA minus. Again, all that H2A has been converted. Uh, we're still reacting with our strong base. I'm writing my reaction. I wrote a one-way arrow again, really large K value for this reaction. So HA minus is going to 
to uh, donate one of its hydrogens. Hydrogen oxide will accept one of those hydrogens, and so we're going to make water, uh, and we're forming the A minus 2 ion. So this is what's happening between the, the first and second equivalence point. So again, if we think at 25 milliliters, we have just HA minus present. Um, at 50 milliliters, HA minus will no longer exist. It has all been converted into A minus 2. So right at the halfway point, so halfway between 25 milliliters and 50 milliliters. So halfway through this reaction, so that'll be at 37.5 milliliters. Again, it's represented by this red dot here right in the middle. So at this point, this is where our HA minus concentration is going to be equal to our A minus 2. We're, we're halfway through converting all of our HA minus. Uh, and so we can use this point, again, halfway between the equivalence points, uh, to get our, our Ka2 value. Uh, now, in terms of the second equivalence point, we don't end up needing to do anything with our second equivalence point. Um, again, if we're trying to get a molar mass value, if we're trying to do a molarity calculation, we can just use our equivalence point 1. Um, if you use your equivalence point 2 value, uh, the issue with doing that is the actual equation to reach the second equivalence point in terms of how it relates to H2A, which is always what we want to be solving for, we want to solve for information about H2A, is the actual reaction from 0 to 50. So again, if we're talking about the entire uh, experiment up to the second equivalence point, if we take our first and second equations we just wrote, uh, we're going to have two hydroxides on the reactant side, we're going to have two waters on the product side. Uh, if we use our second equivalence point, there's actually a 2 to 1 ratio between the amount of hydroxide we've added uh, to get to our second equivalence point and our H2A. So there's really no reason to use the second equivalence point because then you have to factor in the 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, I always just worry about the first equivalence point, again, to make life easier, it's just a one-to-one -one ratio uh, between them. All right, so what might a problem look like? So if we go down here, same graph that we just had. Um, so again, in this particular case, we want to solve for the molar mass of our unknown diprotic acid. Again, we can just generically call our, our unknown diprotic acid H2A. So again, between those two equivalence points, let's just worry about the first equivalence point. Uh, again, no, no need to deal with the second equivalence point. So again, it took 25 milliliters of our strong base in order to reach our, our first equivalence point. Uh, and again, so what's true at our equivalence point is the moles of our acid is equal to the moles of the base that we've added. So again, our acid being H2A and our base being the sodium hydroxide. Not sure why I wrote base there. All right, so moles of our sodium hydroxide. Uh, so again, what we need to do is we're trying to solve for the molar mass. How can molar mass of our acid, how can we have an equation that deals with molar mass. Uh, if you are unsure, there is an equation on our equation sheet, which is moles are equal to mass over molar mass. Uh, in terms of moles of sodium hydroxide, we have a molarity and we have a volume of sodium hydroxide. How can we deal with quantities that we have? Uh, again, on our equation sheet, molarity is moles over liters. So if we rearrange that equation, our mole amount is the molarity times liters. Now, in some problems, we can get away with not converting our volume into liters. Uh, and this, this is not one of those situations. We don't have a second volume unit that we can cancel out the first volume unit with. So in this case, we have to be in we have to be in liters. So taking these two ideas, putting them together, uh, we're going to have the mass of H2A, which is given to us in the problem. We're trying to solve for the molar mass 
of H2A. Uh, and we're going to set that equal to the molarity of the sodium hydroxide and multiply by the liters of sodium hydroxide. Now, again, that volume we get from the equivalence point. So in this case, it took 25 milliliters. So just finishing this problem up, the mass in the problem was 0.915 grams. We're trying to solve for that molar mass value. The molarity of the base we're using was 0.5 molar. The sodium hydroxide volume was 25 milliliters. We can't use milliliters. We're going to have to divide by 1,000 and get two liters. So if we rearrange this equation, we're going to take 0.915 grams and divide by 0.5 molar times 0 0.025 liters. And doing that math, we get 73.2 grams per mole. So that was us getting the molar mass using the equivalence point. Now again, other information that we can get from here is we can figure out the Ka1 value. So again, uh, to dissociate that first hydrogen. So we're gonna look at halfway to the equivalence point. Since the equivalence point was 25 milliliters, halfway is at 12.5, so it's that red dot there. So again, at this point, at halfway to the equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa Again, just the standard thing that happens with uh, with our titration curves. So if we just do an estimate and say that our pH is 2, remember that pKa is really the negative log of the Ka. And so if we want to solve for Ka, we're going to need to uh, multiply both sides by negative 1 and then undo that log function. So we're going to be 10 to the negative second. Uh, we can get Ka2 uh, in, in a similar manner. So again, it took 50 milliliters to get to our second equivalence point. And so halfway between our first equivalence point and our second equivalence point, that's going to be at 37.5 milliliters. So again, this is at our halfway point. Uh, again, the pH is equal to the pKa. I guess now more specifically, it's pKa2. The first one was actually pKa1. Uh, and so if we take a look, the pH is right about 6. And so again, anytime you see the p, uh, it means we're taking the negative log of something. And so if we are rearranging the equation, uh, multiply both sides by negative 1, undo that log function, our Ka2 is 10 to the negative 6th. All right, so that is us looking at a diprotic acid and figuring out a molar mass and getting two different K values. So I'll just write our K values down here. So Ka1 is 10 to the negative second, Ka2 10 to the negative sixth. Uh, again, we're going to look at halfway to our first equivalence point. Uh, Ka2, we're looking at halfway to equivalence point 2, starting from equivalence point 1. So again, this our Ka1 value, we looked at 12.5 milliliters. Uh, halfway to our second equivalence point, we're looking at 37.5 milliliters. All right, so that should be it.